on our dinner tonight. But Michael Barone writing about the first governor, then President Reagan, said Reagan was a believer, as all previous American presidents were, until the one we have now, in American exceptionalism. That is, that America has a divine purpose in the world. That doesn't make us better than other people. In fact, it imposes on us unique burdens that are providential in nature. And Barone goes on to quote President Reagan from a speech he made in 1952, a commencement speech, where he was still a Democrat. He was in the process of moving our way, but at this point he was still a Democrat. Reagan said, I in my own mind have thought of America as a place in the divine scheme of things that was set aside as a promised land. And he went on to describe his promised land as it had to have a providential purpose, that it was set between these two oceans on this magnificent continent. And people came to it from all parts of the world. You remember the poem of Emma Lazarus, send me your fire, your poor, your huddled masses yearning to breathe free, the wretched refuse of your teeming shore. She didn't say, send me your aristocracy. She didn't say, send me your landed gentry, your 36th store on the ACT students. The wretched refuse of your teeming shore, that's what made up America. So Reagan, in his farewell address 22 years ago last month, as he's preparing to leave eight years as our president, said, I've spoken of the shining city on a hill all my political life, but I don't know if I ever quite communicated what I saw when I said it. But in my mind, it was a tall, proud city built on rocks stronger than ocean, windswept, God-blessed, teeming with people of all kinds, living in harmony and peace. A city with free ports that come with commerce and creativity. And if there had to be city walls, those walls had doors, and the doors were open to anyone with the will and the heart to get there. That's how I saw it and see it still. Reagan continued, I wasn't a great communicator, said the man who talked his way onto the debate team, talked his way into college, talked his way into radio, talked his way into the movies, talked his way into politics, talked his way into the governorship of our largest state, and talked his way into the presidency on his way into our office. But continuing with the quote from the president, he said, but I communicated great things. They didn't spring full-blown from my crowd. They came from the heart of a great nation, from our experience, our wisdom, and our belief in the principles that have guided us for two years. That man was a man of destiny, but he believed that you and I inhabit a country and have the unique privilege of calling ourselves Americans, that we are a country of destiny. And I hope that that claim and that passion never dies. And I, I don't believe it will. We always know the race is on between the other side. Some of the pictures you've seen up here, uh, you've seen Obama Claire on there. Have you seen her up there? Uh, our other senator. But I had the honor, before I leave here tonight, of uh, introducing a man who's known so well to all of you, who is who, who spent 14 years serving you and doing a fabulous job as your United States Congressman. And ladies and gentlemen, I've been around a lot of campaigns, and I've waged two statewide campaigns myself, and I know what, a little bit about what goes into it. I can tell you this without fear of contradiction. I have never seen a more focused, more disciplined, more excellent candidate than our United States Senator Lloyd Blunt, and it is no doubt, there is no doubt, of why he carried that race that could have been a squeaker, it could have been closed by more than 14 points with your support here, our United States Senator, Ron Ryan.